Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create dynamic forms using the list widget and this is going to enable you build more complex apps on AppSmith. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate here at AppSmith. Without further ado, let's get started. So right now we have a simple application that displays data coming from a Google Sheet I have right here using the Google Sheets integration. If you do not know how to use the Google Sheets integration, I'm going to leave a link right here at the top corner so that you can go check that out. So what we have here is um, a get books query that fetches data from the Google Sheets we have here and it is displayed on the table widgets we have. But what we want to do is to be able to create a dynamic form based on the item selected on the table widget. So at this point, I know you're wondering when would you want to use this functionality. I'm just going to show you an example of where we had to use this at AppSmith. So we have an application called PG Admin. It is a database GUI tool that was built over Postgres, very similar to PG Admin if you're, if you're familiar with Postgres. And what this does is that it displays um, data coming in from the database. So right here we have all the tables in the database and here we have information about the table selected displayed right here. Um, what is important here is that we have a form to create a new entry in the table and taking a look at this form you can see that we have product name, MRP and every detail that is um, peculiar to the table selected. So going in to select a new table for example and taking a look at that form you can see that the form changes based on the table that is selected. So you would want to use dynamic forms in situations when you do not know what inputs to expect. So such situations will be very useful and today's video is going to address um, showing you how to do that. All right, so for us to get started, we need a list widget because we'll be creating dynamic forms using the list widget. So I'm just going to bring in the list widget right here. All right. And here we have a list widget showing up on the canvas. So let's go in to delete the default widgets we have within it so that we have an empty list. And since we'll be building a form, we would need an input. So I'm just going to bring an input widget and place it within the list widget. All right. So let's expand this to take up the entire space. And there we have a nice list widget showing up. The first thing we need to do is to configure the data that is fed into the list widget. And for that, we can go into the list settings and here in the items property, we can uh, feed that in. For this example, we are going to be supplying items based on the column headers of the table widgets we have right here. So I can show you that by typing table one dot selected row and taking a look at the evaluated value. Every column has an ISBN, a book title, author, year of publication, publisher, image URL, row index, and original index. So we want to create an array based on these keys. And to do that, we can use the object.keys function that is available in JavaScript. So this is going to be object.keys. And taking a look at this, we've been able to convert that object to an array just having the keys from that object using the object.keys function. All right, so this looks good. We can then go in to use this data in the input widgets we have within the list. So we have input one right here. So let's go in to configure this. For the um, input, we want to go in to set the label to be whatever the current item is. So this is going to be current item. And here you can see ISBN, book title, book author, and the list goes on. Next, we also want to set the default text and this would be based on the item selected on the table. So this is going to be table one dot selected row. And we want to pick uh, the value we want to display based on whatever the current item is. So we're going to use the brackets notation and do current item here. And there we have the current item showing up. So let's reduce this so that we are able to see all items from the table. All right, and I think I need to expand this a bit. All right, and that looks good. So we've been able to create a list of dynamic inputs 
based on whatever is selected on the table. So we can go select a new item here, for example, and you can see that that is updated, selecting another item, and that gets updated as well. All right, so the next thing we need to do is to figure out a way to capture data that have been entered into the inputs we have right here, because this is actually the difficult path of um, creating dynamic forms. So let's go in to do that. Uh, to show you how to do this, I'll be using a text widget. So I'm going to reduce the table widget so that we have some room to work with. I'll need to bring in a text widget here. All right, so we have the text widget. And I'm going to go into expand this so that we have enough space to see what we'll be working on. And the reason why I'm bringing this text widget is to show you how to write some JavaScript to extract the values from the list widget we have. So let's go into the text widget. The first thing I'd like to show you is how to statically assess the value of the items from the list. And you can easily do that by typing the name of the list widget, which in this case is going to be list1. So taking a look at the values we have here, we have um, the items values and we can select that. So this is going to be list1.items. We want to select the first item because this is an array of all the inputs that have been captured from the list widget. So this is going to be list1.index0. And here we can go in to access the inputs. So this is going to be dot input1. And dot text. And here we have been able to successfully access the input we have right here. So going in to add a new value to this input, for example, you see that we have that data updated um, in the text widget. All right. So that's how we can go in to statically access data from the list widget. But we want this to be dynamic since we are building a dynamic form. What we need to do in that case is I'll need to cut this out and then build an object that is going to both capture the label and the value of those inputs. So in order to do this, I'm going to be using uh, the list item data. So this is going to be list one, for example, dot list data. All right. And taking a look at the list data from the list widget, you can see that this is the same data that we are feeding into the list widget. And what we want to do, since this is an array, we want to perform a reduce on it. So this is going to be dot reduce. The reduce function takes into values. The first is the reducer function, and the second is the initial value. So let's go into write the reducer function. This is going to be a function that has the previous value as a parameter. So this is going to be prev value. We also have current value as a parameter. So let's call this current value. And we also have the current index. So this is its current index. And here is the function body. All right. Next, we also need to pass in a default value, which in our case, since we want an object to be computed that is going to have the label and also the value of those inputs, we need to pass in an object. So we have an empty object right here. Now, the next thing we need to do is to add new items to the object. So we can access the object by typing previous value which by default would be the entire object we have right here. And now we can go into add new items into the object by using the brackets notation. So current value. And we can go into set some value for the new um, key we have added into the object. So I'm just going to paste in what we copied earlier. And instead of hard coding the index right here, we would go on to use the current index. So this is going to be current index. And this looks good. So we have that um, key configured in the object. And what we can do is to go on to return the object. So I'm just going to type in return prev value. And uh, taking a look at the evaluated value pane, you can see that we have computed an object that contains the labels and also the values from those inputs. So we can go into test this out. Here is the object showing up on the text widget. I'm just going to go into update this to something like uh, 20. And you can see that we have 20 added. We can go into edit this as well 
and you can see that that has been edited and that also applies to all the fields we have right here so we can go into add some space and add some text right here and you can see that that similarly has been updated all right so now that we are computing this value we can actually use the computed value from the list to make an update to the google sheets data we have um, on the spreadsheet so i can just go in to copy this and let us go to create an update query that will actually make that update to the google sheets so i'm going to click on the data source click on create new and let's call this update book all right for the method we need to set this to update sheet row we also need to specify the spreadsheet url and sheet name we'll come back to this what i want to do is to paste in that snippet we configured in text widget right here so let's uh, paste this right here and uh, this looks good we can take a look at the evaluated value and we see that we are successfully reading inputs and labels from the dynamic form on the list widget all right this looks good so let's go into specify the spreadsheet url i'm just going to copy this right here and we also need to specify a sheet name in this case um, we have the books sheets so this is the sheet i'm going to be using here so let's put books here all right and this looks good so we can go back to the canvas and create a button that will actually let us perform the update so we have a submit button here when this is clicked on what we want to do is to go into call the update query which is the update book query and when that is successful in order for us to perform a refresh we need to go in to call the get books query which will refresh the entire application all right so we can go in to update um, the fourth item we have on the table so here where it says mary for example i'm just going to update this to john and we can see that change reflected here so let's click on the submit button and that should perform the update and refresh the application and we can take a look at this right here and you see that we have john going back to the google sheet and taking a look at that entry you see that we also have john right here showing that the dynamic form actually works and the update query was successful all right so we have seen in this video how to create dynamic forms using the list widget i hope you found this helpful if you have any questions please do let us know in the comment section and we'll definitely address them thank you so much for seeing this video and i'm going to catch you in the next video take care bye bye